Dr. Uday Kumar, he is the head of Department of Design in IIT Guwahati and uh, one of the most illustrious students of IDC. After graduating in architecture, he did his master's in visual communication uh, in, from IDC. Later, he worked as art director of Chip Magazine and Digit, and then he joined again for his PhD. He's our first PhD student to complete his uh, doctorate from IDC. And he is well known as the designer of the Indian rupee symbol. He is one of the rare designers who have immortalized himself through his work. And uh, everywhere and all over, you will see uh, currency notes and everything. You will always see his work in daily life. And he is a wonderful teacher, a very, very interesting human being. One of the sense, most sincere design educators and a wonderful human being to come across. And a very proud moment for me to introduce my student friend. He is more like a friend than a student to me. I would like to introduce Uday Gumar over to you. And a warm welcome um, and on behalf of all the members of the Typography Society of India. I would like to thank Uday for attending this. Many of our members are not able to attend because there is another online program going on in that ADI in Ahmedabad. So for uh, so Tarun, Saran Gulkarni, many of those people are uh, speakers there. But we had already filmed our day, uh, talk for today, uh, uh, alternate Saturday. So we are conducting this. Over to you, Uday. Yeah, thank you, sir. Uh... Uh, with all your blessings, I would begin because whatever I have learned is uh, all about typography is from you. So I am one of the fortunate to have learned under you. So thank you so much for such a wonderful introduction. Uh, it is mumbled, my pleasure. Uh, it is my pleasure. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you. So yeah. Uh, so I would uh, straight away get into the presentation. So well, I, I sir had asked me to make two presentations. So one on the rupee symbol, uh, definitely I'll, I'll start off with that. And I uh, also have another small project, a uh, research project, which I wanted to share it. Uh, not many of you would have seen that, so I thought it would be interesting for me to share it with you and also get your views on that. Uh, so firstly, I'll, I'll now start sharing my screen for the design of a rupee symbol. Many of you would have seen it, perhaps, uh, maybe online, or maybe you would have heard me talk about it elsewhere. But nevertheless, so it can be a refreshing presentation for you once again so i'm going to share my sl uh, slide so i hope you could see the slides uh, um, uh, could you see my slide yes we can see we can see yes sir okay see, yeah. So, yeah so to give you a, a bit of a background, if some of you, if you're not familiar. So basically, this was a competition. It was announced in uh, 2009, around uh, February, uh, March. And uh, it was a, a worldwide competition. But mostly the Indian citizens were allowed to participate in this competition. So it was floated by the Government of India and Reserve Bank of India. So I was doing my uh, PhD uh, under Sir G.V. Shrikumar and Professor Atwan at IDC at that point of time. I was nearly, nearly completing my PhD then, uh, so I also took part in the competition. And uh, so this was a presentation which I kind of presented to, to a seven-member jury. Actually, uh, after the announcement of competition and we submitted and there was not much of communication from the government side, so we had to wait for a very long time. So suddenly in December 2009, after uh, six months, uh, they kind of... Uh, wrote a mail or uh, sent a letter to me that uh, I was chosen as one of the five finalists for the uh, design of the Indian rupee. Um, and we were, uh, the five finalists were asked to uh, make a presentation in front of a, a seven member jury where uh, two, uh, two members were from uh, RBI, including the uh, deputy governor uh, of RBI and two from finance ministry and three from uh, reputed design institute. Yeah, so, uh, and they were, uh, evaluating our presentation. So we were to travel to Delhi and make our presentation. It was a closed presentation. Uh, so we five were there and each one went and made presentations and came out. And uh, So this presentation was the same presentation which I made to the jury member. Uh, 
uh, they, we were asked, supposed to keep it for 10 minutes. So let me see how I can kind of explain some of the aspects of it, maybe elaborate a little more since we have some time. Uh, so, so I'll get on. So that was the, the, the process, it, how it, this uh, competition was held and what happened. And uh, so I, I, uh, so as you know, as, as you can see, this is the symbol which is now in use uh, everywhere as an Indian currency symbol. So, so I primarily based this design on the uh, two scripts. One is the Devanagari script and the Roman uh, script R and R. Uh, so in, in the competitions, there were several guidelines, rules and regulations, which was uh, put in. And uh, so I would try to read the brief as much as possible and try to get a clarity what, what, was, this, what was expected of the symbol. So, so one of the criteria was that the symbol should reflect the uh, Indian tradition, Indian culture and Indian uh, ethos. So, and so I was trying to identify and I focused my, my design uh, concept to that particular point and uh, see what would best reflect our uh, cultural identity, what can be a best cultural identity for our country and what will reflect as Indianness. So uh, while searching, while doing a lot of research and understanding various imageries, and I also looked at coinages, uh, different uh, periods in our own history and uh, find an image that could uh, suit, find a symbol that could kind of reflect that. And then I realized that the script was one of the best thing that would actually uh, reflect the Indianness. And since I was also doing PAC on Tamil typography, so I had to happen to kind of have uh, read through some of the Indian scripts. Yeah. Um, and I, I chose the Devanagari script because of this. Uh, I'm sure many of you are already familiar with this because you're all type enthusiasts and uh, typographers here. So I may don't have to elaborate on the uniqueness of the Devanagari script. Nevertheless, just to kind of get to as a flow of the presentation, I would want to kind of share it. Yeah, so Devanagari is one of the unique scripts in the world. And uh, because of the top line, which is called the Shiroreka, as we know, and it is the part of every single letter in a Devanagari script, which is a unique identity to that script. And it also kind of creates this identity of Indianness to that. Yeah. So you will not, not find such kind of a visual for element in a script in any other uh, scripts. Hardly, they will, even if it is, there be very few. And another aspect is that, another unique aspect is that the writing system itself, as you know that we write Devanagari, uh, which will be hanging from top line, unlike the baseline. Most of the scripts, you, uses the baseline for the writing purpose and so on. But uh, Devanagari is one that it hangs from the top line, which is the Shirureka. And I've chosen this letter R because it will kind of expand to Rupiah. And uh, similarly, you will also find that same symbol is, I mean, I've used a letter R, which is the Roman script, and it also expand to rupees. So both Rupiah and rupees kind of denote the Indian currency. It's in a sense, a kind of an abbreviation which I try to kind of capture in that symbol so that people could be able to easily understand what that stands for. Yeah. Uh, I did not leave it there, but I also kind of uh, had a lot more meaning to it. Uh, if you remember this, the, the, one of the criteria for the competition was that it should be uh, reflect the Indianness, yeah, Indian culture. So, so I, uh, uh, since India is a very diverse country, as you know that both uh, from every point of view, we are very diverse in nature. Yeah, but, from geography, from culture, from tradition, from food, from costume to fashion to anything to take. There's so much of diversity in our in our country. So how do you bring all of them together into one a common uh, uh, idea, or uh, how do you kind of put it in an in unbiased manner? So so I, I felt that flag is one of the symbols which kind of reflects every Indian, and it is unbiased. It does not reflect any particular community, particular religion, or particular region, and so on. So. So that is the whole idea of trying to create a symbol that is, uh, which is uh, uh, unbiased, which is uh, common to everybody, which and also it is also a patriotic symbol. So we often own it and we feel proud of it. So that is the reason I try to symbolically portray that into the symbol. As you can see, there is there's two lines and there's a white space, which kind of reflects the uh, Indian uh, flag, a symbol which will be for every common person, common Indian. It's just not that then the, you have this equal to sign, which is an arithmetic symbol. Uh, if you look at this idea of economy, it all started with the barter system from from the ancient times. Uh, so uh, basically, what it means is that we you only be people exchange goods which are of equal value. Yeah. So if I say I gave one kilo of uh, wheat, you could give a one kilo of rice, and so on. So that's how it all started. And later on, over time, 
then uh, people devise a system, uh, a the currency system, where you have a common uh, entity, a common element for which you can kind of transact with any kind of commodity. Yeah? So you, it's like you give and take, and you give 10 rupees, and you can buy anything worth the 10 rupees value. Yeah, any kind of product or commodity you want to buy. So this is what it actually kind of refer, uh, refers and uh, represents. Yeah? So the economy itself, and uh, and I also like I also let did a little bit of research on uh, various other uh, scripts around the world, try to understand its philosophy, the design, the uh, the background, and how it all evolved, and who designed it, and so on. So I, I try to do and dig up as much as such as possible uh, from various sources. Uh, and this was something which I kind of uh, found. And uh, as you can see, I, I've collected extensive uh, currency symbols, but these are some few which I tried to put it up in the in the slide. Yeah, you can kind of clearly notice that. Uh, all these symbols have one commonality, which is like a bird is either cut by a, a line horizontally, vertically, or diagonally. Yeah, so you will have these two lines or a single line, which kind of bifurcates a, a letter uh, in a different uh, axis. So, and that becomes a common visual vocabulary in terms of what a, a currency symbol is concerned. So, as we, I mean, I've been taught semiotics and uh, about signs, how signs work, and uh, communi in, in communication theory. Yeah, so. Uh, so it was a very good understanding and I tried to apply those understanding into this. So, so I want to create something which is similar to the rest of the currency symbol, not like completely being radical. So that there is some kind of common understanding that these symbols kind of associate with certain meaning. So, so I'm, and I, I, I could figure out that when you kind of have a word and then when you cut across that word, it typically kind of reflect the uh, a currency sign. Yeah. So rather than anything, any any other corporate identity or a traffic chain or something else. So I, I try to deco I mean, understand that and try to create in harmony harmoniously with that. Uh, in fact, once I got once the symbol was announced, many some of them rather criticized that it was just a copy of rest of the currency sign. It was indeed kind of reflecting the other symbols also. We wanted to kind of have a harmonious design. Yeah, I took references from the, this primarily because of this reason. So it, it was not like uh, it was kind of an inspiration, yeah, so to be uh, harmonious and to also mean that this is a currency sign. And I also used an existing uh, forms, yeah, which is like a R and R. If you are familiar with Devanagari, definitely you know how to write R. And when you are from uh, English uh, schooling, you will be definitely know how to write R uh, and so on. So, and this familiarity also kind of adds another value is that it, the recall value uh, becomes increased. Uh, it increases the recall value and the adaptability also becomes a lot more easier. Yeah? Uh, to give you an example, uh, if you if you are both in a crowded public place, say a railway station or an airport or a bus station, yeah, when there are too many people, yeah, but we don't often interact with them just like that. Yeah? But when you see a relative or a friend, you typically go say hi, hello, or maybe wave your hands to that kind of person because you are familiar with it with the person and you want to interact with the person and you want to make a connection, yeah, or a conversation with that person. So that becomes easier to kind of kind of bridge bridge the relationship and uh, get an attachment and not also adapt. So likewise in visual, design, so I felt like using a familiar symbols would make it a lot more easier for people to adapt rather than trying to learn and adapt it. Yeah, so. That's why I try to ex base my design on the existing symbols itself, and which are very simple uh, also in, in nature. And if you look at the entire symbol, they only have three components, the three lines which is there. Uh, other than that, it's not. So again, it reduces the cognitive load uh, if you if you wanted to kind of really uh, write or look at it visually also. And yeah, like I said, it also gives the simplicity also gives a very high recall value. And one of my objectives in, in in the design is also to create something which is very simple, which is very direct, and which which is very easily usable for people and adaptable uh, adapted by the people. Yeah. So these were challenges uh, which I try to kind of address that uh, through the symbol. Yeah. So, uh, and uh, of course, I, I try to work on the construction so as as your type designers. I I don't have to add much to it and how it makes a big difference to a typeface and to the designs of the letters. Yeah. So. I try to work on various uh, various designs, various iterations, and I also shot several uh, footage, very short clippings about how people will uh, do uh, write in in in, uh, in the in the writing. Yeah, uh, uh, of course, I, this is in the it's not embedded in the presentation. It may not play. I don't know whether it will play or not. Yeah, I think it's uh, yeah, I think it's playing. Yeah. 
is it playing uh, I, I, oh, sir we are not able to see the video oh, okay. okay i think it's not playing it's not embedded i guess yeah so i tried to show how people will write the symbol with the devanagari script and with the regular uh, arabic uh, numerals yeah so that that was basically the idea did it move to the next slide yeah okay so i also tried some lot of other things i tried to visually balance it because if you look at this letter r the, the lower slant kind of becomes very powerful inclination which kind of makes the letter fall on the left side so i tried to give an opposite cut and make the the two lines in flow, um, moving in the opposite direction so this was some of those finer tweak uh, tweaks which i did in the in the design to kind of create my uh, balance based on my own understanding and my own visual perception and uh, my my own aesthetics yeah, how i see things yeah so and also try to adjust the length of the uh, lines how long it should be and also kind of vary the slant as well i kind of modified a lot of things at at the finer details yeah, so to to my own uh, understanding and how it should look like and one other thing which i did is i also kind of designed the paisa symbol uh, which was not asked for but as a designer i thought it too it, it this could also be in potential uh, uh, design solution for certain i mean you know if you want to create a harmonious design along with the rupee symbol as you know the the dollars also have the cent cents and their denominations also have uh, designs yeah dollar sign as a symbol and cent also as a symbol so like many of the currencies denominations also have symbols so i thought why not create one and kind of present it and uh, this will also kind of minimize the uh, government's effort and uh, various and also they don't have to spend more and, uh, and also prevent a lot of logistic issues yeah and again coming up with the competition to kind of create a paisa symbol so this was just an uh, i anticipated one and i gave it but yeah they said they'll think about it during the presentation and after that of course we did not i did not hear anything so so this was just an idea which i wanted to give to them and this is how it will look like with an arabic uh, and uh, uh, devanagari numeral and this is how it will look like arabic numerals typically the symbol is seen with the numerals uh, so that's that's why i wanted to kind of see and i also tried to figure out how a unicode uh, where this unicode system, it will fit into a unicode system of course i am not an expert into it this was just a basic understanding a preliminary understanding of what how unicode works and where it could fit in so i was trying to do at the limited time whatever that is available uh, whatever that i could access the information i tried to uh, put it and uh, provide a solution for the unicode positioning yeah so this is what i found and i, I gave at that point of time yeah, so so as you, as you see uh, the symbol has uh, two uh, a lot of this meaning gone into it in uh, in creating it yeah. so and also trying to reinforce this idea of indianness yeah, which was one of the briefs that was given by the government yeah. so trying to emphasize that and uh, bring out that and make it as simple as possible for people to kind of view it yeah. so so basically this this is was the whole idea and i want to create a meaning simple symbol yeah a symbol should signify a meaningful thought meaning to a symbol is like soul to a body without soul the body is nothing without deeper sensible and thought provoking meaning the symbol is needless this symbol truly symbolizes our country our tradition our nation's economy and its currency so yeah so basically that that was that was the uh, idea behind the symbol and i'm thankful to uh, idc and i'm thankful to my school teachers i studied from lashat lane residential junior college uh, in chennai it's a boarding school so i was in a boarding school since first standard to 12 so i'm i'm thankful to all my teachers there who had made me what i am today and i'm also thankful to all my professors in school of architecture and planning anna university uh, where i did my bachelor's in architecture and i'm thankful to idc all my professors in idc professor gv shikmar and uh, all my professors there who had helped me shape up my design thinking and uh, design sensibility and for the person who i am today so i'm thankful to all my teachers from idc school of design iit bombay and thanks to my friends and my family who are, who are always there uh, for all the support whenever i need it yeah, so and their encouragement yeah so that that is basically it about the symbol yeah, so uh, if you have questions i can uh, i can i'll be happy to answer yeah so like i said i was planning for another presentation sir said that you also make this presentation so i thought i should present the rupees in questions later after everything is over okay then fine so, so then i'll i'll now move on to another please, uh, please, uh, please, uh, please, presentation yeah. okay yes sir, i'll do that yeah. 
So I'm, I'm going to kind of disconnect this share and then I'm going to do a new share. And uh, I hope uh, you. Uh, can you see the slide? I can't see now. Yeah. Oh, now I can see. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to make it a full screen. It, it just becomes very slow now. Uh, is it in the full screen or? No, no. I can see the oh. other slides on the left side. Uday. Uh, yes, sir. First, first you will have to full screen it, then you share it. Then it is possible. Oh, okay, okay. I'll I'll do that then. I'll stop the sharing now. I'll I'll do the full screen. Samo, this uh, presentation is not getting into a full screen mode. <laughs> I'm just, uh, no, I'll just at least enlarge it. Don't worry, it's okay. Okay. Uh, this last presentation happened, but this presentation suddenly kind of stopped. I'll maybe save and then... Maybe you can uh, save it as a PDF file and then open it. Okay, sir. I'll, I'll just... So Just then, that. Uh, when you use a full screen, it works very nicely with the. Okay, sir. I'll, I'll just just give me a moment. I'm just doing no, that no same. No problem. I was under the impression that uh, licensed, uh, the pro version of Zoom will allow more than 100 participants. Okay. Yes, All sir. Right. So they will charge you more for allowing more than 100? Eh? No, sir. They are charging per month basis. <laughs> uh, sir, I'm just going to share the PDF. So if Please let me know if you can see them. Uh, oh, now we can see full screen very nicely. Yeah. Okay, okay sir. Yeah. Uh, so this this was a research which I did in IDC when I was doing my PhD, and this was one of my first research. So please pardon me if you find something uh, not not so uh, authentic or something like that, because I, I was a no voice then. I, that was my first experience with uh, research. Uh, when I joined the PhD program, and this is the first pro project, and I wanted to get used to this uh, quantitative research methodology. So I thought I'll do a smaller project to kind of understand how qualitative research is done. So I took, again, since my uh, typography was my subject area, and uh, uh, so I tried to kind of take a, a similar uh, uh, a topic which will kind of allow me to do a quantitative research. So this was my beginning of getting into research mode. And so this was my first experience and I tried to kind of do a small experiment and try to understand how uh, research works. And, and at the same time, also trying to understand Tamil letters better because my, my thesis was all in Tamil typography and Professor G. Shukmar and Professor Atwan Kerr was my supervisor and they've also helped me with this research as well. Yeah, so uh, I tried to add a few things. So this is very at a very basic level. But again, I thought I should show this because it might be of uh, something for you. And you may also want to take similar research and wanted to add on to it and further do uh, in-depth research and learn from it and also contribute in terms of research knowledge is concerned. So uh, yeah, so I was trying, well, the, basically what this research was is to identify letters which, which were kind of confusing. Yeah, so within the letters itself, it's kind of a legibility uh, test you can say. Yeah. So uh, one of the first hypotheses which I had was that since Tamil was having a very distinct shapes, yeah, all of those letters have a very distinct shape. So I don't, I thought that there would not be any similarities or any confusion in identifying them. So there won't be any legibility issues. So that was the uh, premise, uh, premises of the hypothesis. 
and so the aim was to kind of identify and especially with the vowel uh, vowel letters which we call weir eluth and uh, uh, con vowel consonants weir may eluth in in tamil letters yeah so so i did an experiment to identify the uh, uh, confusion confusing uh, letters within the uh, script tamil script yeah so so i did some uh, uh, background literature and uh, of course this literature is kind of little old but if you go to this website if you look at the down so there is this source i have written yeah which is like obreed.net letter sim yeah so there is this person called sean t muller uh, muller yeah he is an associate professor from uh, michigan technology university so he is actually from a psychology background so most of these uh, legibility letter uh, i mean letter uh, similarity test often are done by psychologists and uh, or people in the psychology domain yeah so you will hardly find type designers and uh, typographers at least to my knowledge doing such, uh, such a in depth uh, research in terms of uh, understanding the reading aspect of it legibility aspect of it of course recently now you will find a lot of people when they want to design a typeface they want to look at this from all point of view of trying to create a legible typeface and so on but as far as research in depth research full fledged research is concerned you will often find in psychology journals yeah and uh, like this ophthalmology journals and vision and so on yeah so so this his this person is a psychology professor and he kind of compiled lot of this data regarding this letter similarity uh, experiments and research and he has kind of put, uh, put a huge list from 1920s to 2012 or if you see the latest yeah and he has also published numerous papers yeah so this all of these uh, literature studies from his uh, resource at that point of time so even when i access now i could kind of really see those a uh, list of publications still there on his website yeah so it was very uh, it was a tremendous help for me as a beginner i did not know where to look at in terms of research especially in terms of letter similarities and he had compiled all the researches at one place yeah so these are some of the brief explanations for some of the literary uh, the some of the papers that i read yeah so in this in 1927 banister kind of did an experiment where he kind of showed a capital letters yeah a b c d and then ask the at a distance and ask the subjects to identify which letter it is and they have to kind of write it yeah so and uh, if they are like right, identified correctly it's nothing no problem if they identify it wrongly then they he will kind of put it in a matrix yeah so that was basically it. if you look at this uh, image you can it is very evident yeah you can kind of see uh, in the left column kind of tells the letters that were exposed to the subject and in the the vertical columns uh, the Uh, you can kind of see that uh, letters that are reported to be this letter yeah and then you can identify in the last extreme right column you will find the kind of mistakes people have made in wrongly identifying a particularly particular exposed letter for example when the capital letter q was shown nearly one not six mistakes happened in identifying it as q yeah so and with which particular letter is already shown in that particular row of q you can see yeah uh, and especially with q and o you will find 38 people as mistook q as o so this was a matrix which was created by by him and he created three kind of matrix like this uh, to identify the con confusing letters yeah between each letters uh, so uh, and there were lot more studies in in a similar manner but with a different experiment process yeah so the earlier one was just showing it showing showing the letters to the subject in this uh, research what the experimenter did is he basically showed already the pairs together in a printed form so and then they were trying to scale them uh, in a likert scale from 1 to 5 uh, yeah and then he kind of concluded uh, the, uh, the confused pairs yeah so he kind of created various uh, pairs of letters and then showed it to the viewer yeah so like this they they there were lot more experiments yeah so which was done maybe i will not go detail if you can refer to the resources you will find it lot more informative information on the research about how uh, letter similarity experiments are done uh, which letters confuses each other yeah so coming to my own research so i took i did study lot of these uh, publications on on those uh, research and derived uh, certain uh, conclusions and i applied it applied it to my own research yeah. so i tried to do it for tamil uh, letters i took the vowels and consonants so one problem was that in tamil if you look at the consonants 
they have a dot which is uh, an inherent visual element in the consonants itself so uh, and that becomes a unique quality which people would easily identify so i don't want to have that so what i did is i tried to choose a vowel consonant uh, con uh, consonants in tamil are half sounds which is like ik ing h but if you uh, take vowel consonants they are full sounds yeah it's one yeah so like ka nya cha nya ta so i tried to take the vowels and vowel consonants so i took these two combinations and which are most often most frequently used letters as compared to the consonants itself in the in the tamil uh, scripts yeah so i took those two and i tried to identify uh, which of the pairs will get confused so and then i designed an experiment and uh, so so from the literature what i got to understand is that uh, under a un improvised condition under a difficult situation uh, the true identity of a uh, the skeletal structure of a letter will be very visible and people will be able to clearly recognize so that was one of the conclusions of the literature so i tried to kind of try to do an experiment based on that yeah so trying to provide a condition which is very difficult to identify a letter but if the skeletal structure is strong enough to kind of give that uh, the the subject that this is that particular letter then it is very well and good yeah so it is easily recognizable so that was the first parameter which i set in kind of designing my experiment yeah. so what i did is i try to kind of uh, uh, I'll, i'll show you on the next slide uh, uh, so i i try to kind of create a web screen yeah it, this was a done on a setup yeah in a monitor it was a, it was kept constant throughout all the subjects yeah on the monitor you will kind of see a letter appearing one after the other in a sequence once the letter appears what the subject has to do is just the type that particular letter what letter that was and that is it and once he types then the next letter will appear and then again he will have to type that particular letter so likewise there is a sequence so in a sequence he has to identify one after the other so that was basically the uh, idea so like like uh, like i said so this was the screen and the below is where the the subject will kind of type the sequence yeah what letter had appeared yeah so and uh, so this was the basic experiment and then with the, whatever the answers the uh, subject gave i try to kind of map that into a matrix and then figure out what are the letters which were confused then i'll show you how i have done it yeah so so and uh, before i begin so this was my first uh, pilot test yeah so you want to do a trial and error to figure out the ideal setting for the experiment so that uh, there is no bias or ambiguous or uh, skewed data that you going to get yeah, out of this uh, quantitative experiment yeah so uh, so this was my first i used tamil elango panjali again it depends from typeface to typeface so i do choose this particular typeface primarily because this was one of the most popular typeface used in tamil industry uh, tamil publication industry so you will find many of the magazines books and headlines posters use this tamil elango panjali yeah so at, at least at that point of time i could see this was predominantly used so i choose that most popular typeface and with this uh, settings yeah so the, the, i choose a 100% black color at the center and i expose it for 1/10 of a second so when i press a key it will just appear in 1/10 of a second and it disappears yeah and the position was fixed on the center so when i did this experiment it it was not very effective yeah most of the subject felt felt and the author, they gave the feedback they were easily they could easily identify the letter yeah one it was very large a point size and two it was black it had a very good contrast with the background yeah, i had a white plain white background and three it was in the center so over a period of time say after first two three exposure of the first two three letters it becomes easier for them to kind of identify because they could expect that if the letter is going to come in the center so they kind of focused on the center and they knew they were their attention span grew yeah and they could easily identify after four five letters all the letters were quickly identified yeah so then i tried to modify the experiment and then i did a second pilot test with the users now i increased the speed the exposure time to 130th and uh, the position was the same and i made the black into a gray level yeah so then again i started to experiment and do this uh, te uh, test Uh, uh the problem is that again like i said people anticipate at the position it is going to come in spite of being a black or a gray or even increasing the speed people still figure out figured out at least in the last 10 15 words they could easily 15 letters they could easily make out that this is that letter yeah because of their concentration yeah as time passed by so 
then again i kept varying so this time i did all combination i reduced the point size i reduced the gray level and i also increased the uh, the kept the time but again i changed the uh, 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 the position of the letter so they cannot know where the letter is going to appear so it can appear in any point of the screen it can be in the top right bottom left or left or right or center or anywhere it can appear so once they appear they should be able to quickly able to glance it and see see the letter and then identify it. and this kind of gave an optimum setting kind of to figure out uh, how how we, uh, uh, to carry out the experiment without any unbiased data getting uh, gathered yeah so then then i started and another challenge is also to add kind of create a sequence yeah so because if you just create just 12 vowels if you kind of expose and it becomes easier they will they think that there is no other missing letters that is left yeah so even after finding 11th so 12th one will be obviously the one which is not there so then i had to kind of devise a means to kind of create this uh, randomness yeah so what i did is i created this 12 vowels and 18 vowel consonants which make one complete set and then i took 10 random letters from this complete set and then combined with so then we had 40 letters so for example here if you see yeah, so vowel, vowel consonants, and then 10 letters which are randomly picked up from the same 30 set, 30 uh, now complete set. And you can, I had three sequences, 40 letters of three sequences, which will complete four complete sets of entire letters. Yeah, so then I used one sequence. So the sequence is all I, I know the as an experimenter, I know the sequence. Yeah, what sequence that will happen. I know the sequence one, sequence two, six, sequence three, but the subject will not know what is the sequence. Since I know, so I will be able to compare the feedback and what the sequence I have, and then we may be able to map it onto the matrix. Yeah. So this was basically was how I tried to devise the experiment and started to conduct it. And and this was the analysis. I had only 20 subjects because I was in IIT Bombay. I had where uh, Tamil friends were very few uh, in my in my own circle. So whomever I could catch hold of, I could got, get them for to do my experiment. Yeah, and uh, yeah, so there were people and so the, though, like I said, this is just the beginning of my research, the subject might be very less, yeah, 20 subject is less, typically in a research, you wanted to have as more, as many subjects as possible to kind of get an accurate data, but since it's a beginning, but it was not too bad as well, because getting a 20 subject is also good, yeah, depending on the experiment and all the conclusion that you wanted to derive. Yeah. So, yeah, so I kind of had 20 subjects and I, I tried to do this experiment. I had the sequence and for each subject, I picked up a random sequence for uh, subjects and then I gave them to kind of recognize those letters and each people kind of identified. And then this was how I created a matrix. I created first an Excel sheet. Yeah, The first, the blue color, if you, blue row, if you see, these were the letters of sequence one, which was kind of exposed yeah, in, in, in that particular order. And if you all see uh, the yellow line, is the subject 12. This this is what he has given as a feedback. Yeah. So for a letter O, he has typed E, which was not the right letter. He is, did not identify it correctly. So in the green row, you will find this. These were the two pairs, which were kind of one is a confused letter. One is the letter exposed and one is the confused letter. So likewise, I kind of created this one feedback. And the star indicates they did not have any answer. So there was also an option if they could not identify which letter it is, they can just press a star. Yeah. If they cannot figure out which uh, put into any kind of a letter that they saw, or if they missed looking at the letter. Yeah. So then, then you have the star with it. Yeah. So if they identified correctly. Then you can see that there is a R exposed and the R is kind of identified correctly. E again, likewise. So for every subject, I kind of created this uh, Excel sheet and then. Uh, I try to kind of create a matrix out, out of this and maybe uh, the next slide will be able to clearly see. Before making the matrix, I also did. So I also kind of took each vowel, each consonant and put it on a row. And, and then I again, I kind of put those, the created a further rows, trying to show which letter and which letter kind of were being confused how many times. Yeah, if you see the numbers, are uh, and who were confused once, uh, and uh, and all of those combinations and permutation combinations I kind of listed extensively and try to kind of see the numbers of times these combinations were kind of being uh, wrongly entered or wrongly identified. And then further I kind of went about and then created this. This was the final conclusion of my uh, 
uh, the experiment. So I kind of created and identified which letter and uh, I'll go on to kind of further kind of tell you how, uh, what are the key insights of this experiment. Yeah. So uh, one of the key insights was that this was the most uh, confused pair. Yeah. So when I showed letter O, which is the long, long sound O, people confused it with the short sound O. Yeah. Because Primarily because there's uh, there's a small differentiating factor between these two glyphs. Yeah? So if you see that uh, bottom row, uh, bottom there's a circle there which is not there in the right side letter. Yeah, that is the only differentiating pattern. Pattern. Yeah. Maybe people only scan the top top part of it and uh, they kind of did not scan. Maybe. Yeah. So again, we cannot pinpointly say which part they looked at it. Probably with this now with this eye tracker and all of those things, it becomes easier to kind of pinpoint the the vision of where the the subject has looked into the screen yeah but at that point of time i, I did not have access to those kind of uh, uh, equipments yeah so this was just a basic exposure on a monitor yeah. uh, without an head mount or an uh, uh, eye tracker uh, yeah so you will find 12 people kind of confused with these two letters yeah so yeah, like I said, though the only differentiating factor was this little curve there, the circle at the bottom of these two letters, and perhaps that could be one of the reasons. Yeah, and similarly, I kind of found out a lot of these kind of combinations pairs where the maximum confusion actually happened. So this was the next level. Again, it is kind of evident because if you look at this, the this is no and le, and uh, the central part, the the overall. Skeletal structure looks similar except for the central part where it is a circular and in the le, it is just a straight line. Yeah, so maybe that is another reason where the counter space is not big enough for them to kind of clearly identify it as a line or a counter space. Yeah, so that's why they could have confused with this particular letter. Again, these are all my assumptions, but as from the conclusions, you could kind of somewhere kind of make out and create an insight. Yeah, similarly with this letter, yeah, so maybe at a very short span. The vertical line of the yeah in the middle line of the vert middle vertical line of yeah is disappears and makes it like look like a per yeah so so I went on to create uh, these conclusions based on the matrices and uh, it is not just the one way it is even the other way around when I showed letter the the long sound and the short sound again the vice versa also the same kind of confusion happened for the maximum yeah so here are the combinations in either which way it's the uh, the exposed letters A, then the short sound A is kind of confused. If the exposed letters A and the long sound A is kind of confused. So the numbers I try to tally and then find out yeah, the what is the maximum number. And this is the order in which the maximum confusion actually happened with certain pairs of letters in either combinations. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, it was this was one of the surprising uh, uh, conclusions which I found. Yeah, because curse is most predominantly used. This is Ka in uh, Tamil. Yeah, and all the 20 subjects kind of could not find out letter Ka. And I was surprised how it could it could be missed because that's the first all consonants and it's it's known. And uh, I though I could not exactly identify the reasons, but probably this could be a guess. Yeah, maybe. If the counter it was it looks like a block or something when it suddenly appears yeah so they do not clearly distinguish the features of this letter the lines and the counter space maybe not large enough to kind of figure out even if you look at the right bottom curve it kind of closes uh, with uh, more tightly yeah, without much of an open space there yeah so maybe all of these reasons could have uh, created this confusion or maybe couldn't uh, left the users not to identify this yeah yeah. And similarly, the least uh, confused letters were R, M, and Y. So, and uh, this letter, this particular letter, was confused with many letters. Yeah. Uh, for example, this letter was kind of confused with N, A, A, N, Y, N, U. So all of these letters. So it has the maximum combinations of letters with which this uh, L was kind of confused. Yeah? So likewise, you could. I draw a lot of these conclusions, very interesting conclusions if you look at it. If if my sample size was larger, it would have been a lot more better for me to kind of clearly identify what could possibly be the confusion and what would, how people would have misunderstood in reading the particular letter. Yeah. So and these were the letters which were very distinct in nature and they were least confused because probably again, in the, especially the second letter, the middle letter E, yeah, which has this two dot, which is very distinct, and that's why people could easily recognize it and kind of get it right. And similarly, maybe the letter A, it's with this uh, complex features and also this uh, tail part of it, yeah, and R as well. 
Yeah, so this is the most confused letter they already mentioned. Yes, it's 36 times uh, kind of uh, people confused with too many other letters. And this is the least uh, confused letter, which is very simple, like just like an L uh, in, in a Roman script. Yeah, so yeah so uh, what, what is the significance of this research probably it is just a starting point maybe if i like i said if i expand the uh, sample size and also maybe use an eye tracker as well to kind of exactly pinpoint where the people looked at it when they when the letter was exposed probably it becomes easier for to identify the letter feature in which the designer has to kind of really work on and it also gives a preliminary idea of how to create a legible typefaces if, if designers are interested in trying to look at these confused pairs uh, in a particular script. Yeah, so I try to look at uh, Tamil uh, in particular and that and also like I said it is to this particular typeface. Maybe there are different typefaces where their uh, compass can be clearly distinguished and uh, well designed. So for Tamil Ilungu Panjad this was an issue. Yeah, so these combinations had some issues. So maybe in your own design probably if you do this simple test probably you might find some interesting feedback and uh, you may want to conclude and uh, redesign and uh, create something which is a lot more legible and not confusing. Yeah, so this can be a starting point of understanding how uh, how to eliminate or how to create a legible typeface. Yeah, so and especially on the on screen also you may want it to work at even if it, especially in smaller point size it kind of creates a real problem poses a real problem and now that we have la large number of uh, small screen devices probably you want to kind of uh, look at uh, designing from this kind of confused pairs of letters within a particular script or a typeface or a font yeah so yeah so thank you and this is this is i thought i should kind of share yeah so one of my first research which i did during my phd uh, days yeah so yeah thank you so that that is all i have to share yeah so if you have any questions i'd be happy to kind of answer that Thank you, Uday, for a detailed uh, work on that. Hello. Uh, thank you. Yes. And, yeah. uh, and what yeah. what I observed during uh, uh, because I've been working in all Indian languages for uh, more than two decades. Uh, even I in Tamil is confused with uh, na pronunciation uh, na and la also. Okay. Uh, most of the uh, because you only tried with the basic characters, not with combinations of uh, um, ovals in this, all consonants in this. So I, la uh, and the randishudi na are uh, also the, the problem with character similarities. Um, fortunately, okay. fortunately, I've been working on uh, a project which I can share you separately. I already uh, sure. Uh, so. Uh, um, during that and Ariel, Ariel also, you would have mentioned the I due to this shudi randu shudi curve and not a straight line, even the edge of like you explained about ka. Ka and yeah, cha ha, we have yes. uh, yeah, ka and cha we have only one small uh, ending. Small, connection. Yes, correct. So that correct. is the main that is the main reason people were uh, most confused uh, reading ka and cha and chu. Okay. Cha and hmm. Ukar also uh, uh, looks similar like. Uh, okay. Yeah. So, correct. You are right. Yeah. So that was that was also there. This combination was also identified. Huh, huh. So uh, among the uh, main consonants, uh, you have you have shown maximum possible at your preview at that time. Because it yes. was your, your a few years ago's work. Yes. Okay. But I, yeah. I, I identified few uh, in this area with uh, I, Randishudina and La also. So similarly with uh, Ka, Chu and uh, some other characters. Though Tamil has very less characters in comparison with any Indian script. Uh, Correct. Still, still, still it has such kind of a problems, uh, which I have also understood and trying to solve it in a different way. Thank you so much for your right. both presentations. Um, oh, thank you. Uh, God bless you. And uh, thank you. Uh, we, thank we, you. We, we are more than hundred uh, participants. Wish you uh, to work more deeply on more different uh, various subjects on this. Mm -hmm.
thank you so thank much you. Ujai. and and i have the thank same you. complaint same complaint you haven't shown your face at least now while answering you should show your face uh, okay <laughs> we will we will we'll be happy looking face. at you no we feel very happy looking at you okay uh, thank you sir thank you i'm just happy to meet you okay. yeah. 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 i i have a question uh, uh, uday uh, yes kalaji hi 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 uh, in fact i have other questions i will wait for let other people uh, question you and i'll come back later but uh, with your uh, research i was wondering whether uh, what would have been the result how different would have been the result if you had your subjects did not know tamil okay yes if, uh, yeah. it was just a uh, uh, shapes for them okay whether yeah. of course you consider them uh, or if you did not consider them what do you think would have been the result if they uh, were just not exposed to tamil yeah, yeah it it would have been interesting but since it was my first experiment i thought let me do it with properly with the tamil uh, uh, known people uh, so probably i should have continued with uh, uh, further with uh, non tamilians to uh, see how they kind of identify the script yeah whether they will really look at it yeah it would have been really interesting to look at it but i i have not done it but, but since uh, like i said it was my first experiment and i want to do it with the tamil you no know, uh, script uh, people who know the tamil script and so it becomes easier for me to move ahead and time was very short for me to do that project so these were the limitations i had at that point of time Mm-hmm. and i was a little uh, no voice <laughs> so i was getting used to this yeah. so, so I, i i will end this question with an anecdote that panchari font i'll tell you a small history uh, okay. that was designed by a company called vss in mumbai okay in uh, end of 1980s okay oh, nice. and uh, it was initially a, a, just a bit back font and i was the person who was in charge of uh, digitizing it from the letter press fonts okay oh, great. <laughs> oh, nice. later later it was uh, converted to outline and uh, mr ilen go uh, who uh, in chennai yes. has digitized lot of fonts uh, had a relationship with the uh, vss and uh, i really don't know after I, i was there for only couple of years and they oh. shared some designs and uh, so he has retained the panchari which was initially digitized by vss in bombay okay, okay. in 9 so small and oh thank you but yeah. i got this from him only so he can yes, share yes. when i do he said she shared this uh, font with me tambi uh, this name is also there part of the uh, typeface if you notice yeah he, he, he uh, all, all the typefaces has his uh, name okay same correct so, yes and, and Ra- Ra- rajiv rajiv prakash who is also attending uh, also yes. joined the same company vss a uh, few years after i left so there is a connection oh, there okay very nice uh, uh, udhi lango uh, uh, lango is very popular font in uh, yes. uh, tamil in tamil nadu and the uh, source is from a vss computer udhi <laughs> <laughs> yes can you hear me udhi yes sir Okay, I want to introduce you that to say that Sunil Kollar ji is from the first batch of visual communication in MDS, the oh, inaugural nice. batch. We met, sir. Actually, during this uh, Golden Jubilee, uh, we met. Uh, oh. I met him, yeah. so I had an interaction. So that batch is very special to IDC. That yes, yes, the first batch of VC program. And uh, out of curiosity, I want to know the. Yes, sir. When we are talking about readability and legibility and the way a person looks at a letter form, I don't know why should we think about an experiment with people who don't know Tamil? Because when we are thinking about finding a cure for uh, malaria, there is no point in uh, doing testing people who don't have malaria. So the way you don't know. <laughs> Then you start looking at it from from a very different viewpoint, then you are changing the goalpost totally. And uh, someone who doesn't know the language, he looks at it as a visual in a very different way. 
as a different it looks like an image to him but for a person who knows the language it is much more than yes so i think yes. the psychology is very different then you should see it as a totally different uh, experiment not connected to this sir okay. uh, can i have a word uh, sir yeah <coughs> see i am a non tamilian sir i'm 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 not a tamil speaker also hmm but somehow i learned reading all indian scripts except persian arabic scripts and i used to work several uh, advertising no, uh, material no i'm not that i'm no, just... no 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 sir no sir I, i in this process so i have seen many people writing in the, the way which is not very clear or identifiable uh, in the character similarities so i i could be one subject because only knowing the letter forms not the language and uh, and understanding that so Hello? that that may be an exceptional uh, thing yeah because i i see many character similarities in gujarati number 5 and pa so there are hmm. there are several things in that whether you, your tamil speaking is a different thing whether you know the language yeah. and then yeah. you look at the letter form yeah. is totally different from you yes yeah, that, that is true language and looking at letter Yes, sir. what you said is hundred percent true. I am just saying true. that there is a psychological yes. difference. Yes, yes, you, true. That is true. Half way down the experiment, you can't change the goalpost and say that. Yes, yes, you are hundred percent uh, true, sir. Uh, Shri Kumar, you. okay, uh, here uh, I I beg to differ. Uh, I think uh, there is uh, might be a good relationship. How familiarity. introduces or uh, reduces confusion since the idea was to identify pair of confusing letters uh, does familiarity with those uh, add to the confusion or reduce the confusion that is a question uh, change of subjects uh, could have answered okay whether it was part of the objective or not yes if it was not that's a different but i think it's a very good experiment how familiarity with uh, the script actually helps you or not okay that that's the question i agree with you but the thing is it should be seen uh, of course it should be conducted but yeah, I, yeah. what i feel is it should be seen as a different experiment not connected yeah. to because yeah. psychological thing about a person seeing the script is very different in that way very true so very true. true very true true sir so what i am saying is it is discrete and it's not continuous mm. and i will open the floor to all the every all the other 100 people <laughs> feel free to ask questions this is a wonderful chance all the i request all of you please make use of this uh, chance and uh, raise your questions to uday kumar Okay, if uh, nobody has a question, I will ask one question. Uday, sir, uh, I think Uday sir has dropped a message that uh, he is disconnecting. Probably he had a, he got a call. Oh. Yeah, so he just uh, messaged on the group. Okay, fine, fine, fine. Then we'll stop. Yeah. No, he thank you so much. Disconnecting. Yeah. Uh, Uday sir, are you still there? No, I think yes. He was. That must be a technical problem. Could be. He has messaged on the group. Yeah. Okay. So I like to thank everybody. Thank, thank you. So thank much. you. We'll meet after two weeks. <laughs> thank you. Yes. So thank much. you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank you, everyone, sir. for joining. Sorry, I missed uh, uh, Sri Kumar. I missed your your thing because I tried to join, but it was full. Oh, I'm so sorry, sir, because. Yes, all right. Uh, Zoom, even if uh, after we getting a license, they yeah. are not allowing more than hundred participants. Yeah, yeah. I was speaking. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, I just uh, thought I. Yeah, Uday Kumar has come back. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uday has come back. So anybody has a question to Uday Kumar, please ask. Yeah. Ha. Uh-huh. Hello, sir. Can you hear us, Uday? Uday, can you hear us? Sir, he dropped a message. He is unable to hear. 
Okay, he is facing some. He has some connection issues. Okay, okay. Then I will do one thing. I can I will type the email ID. You can write to him. So I have typed the email ID. Sure. Thank you. All of you who have any questions, feel free to ask. And uh, I'm very happy to see Shaker sir here. And I'm sorry that uh, we had to keep a lot of people in the waiting room because we never anticipated this 100 limit crossing in such a short time. Yeah, that's OK. I think uh, more, uh, young people need it uh, more as we join. You know, I'm just uh, past the limit, you see. Yeah, but but here it's about 10 o'clock now, 10.30. Oh, OK. No, yeah, sir, okay. I'll send you the link in the YouTube video. Yeah. For you to see. Because anyway, nice to meet you. Yeah, we will be taking a, a permission from him and uploading the video in YouTube. Mm. Once the speaker agrees, then we will put it into the uh, YouTube. That time, mm. I will definitely email it to you. But it's okay. very nice to see you. Okay. Nice Thanks. meeting you all. Yes, sir. Bye. Thank you, sir. Bye-bye. Bye, sir. Bye, sir. Bye-bye. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everybody. Thank yeah. you. Shri, Thank sir. You, uh, 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 yeah, Oday, sir, will trying to connect you, I think. Who? Yeah, I, I have Oday, sir. And I have a question about, uh, as I see, some form is just so closing. Uh, it's some kind of familiarity I, I found with the Persian script and Arabic and Tamil that is represented by some dots. Like there is a constant uh, in the Tamil, the Odessa uh, shows us the ninth letter of Tamil is look like Na in Arabic, also similar to Urdu. Mm. So can we develop a font to represent a multilingual side of Tamil and Persian? Yeah, I think both of you should collaborate and then do one. It will be a very path breaking exercise. Yeah. Sir, can I can I have a word, sir? Yeah. Uh, the, in Taipo Day, one uh, uh, Sinhali person has developed Tamil with Sinhalese. Huh. Uh, and uh, that that was a very good experiment uh, done with Tamil and uh, Sinhali yes, characters. Sir, I agree that you know typographers should work uh, together and we should create new things and. Uh, uh, new versions of bilingual type yeah. of be yeah, very because yeah. he was he has presented in a beautiful way yeah. uh, the war between Tamilians and uh, Sinhalese and uh, he tried to uh, make them uh, uh, brotherhood between these two communities yeah. and he designed it uh, it's a very appreciable item like yeah. uh, this gentleman is saying maybe that could be possible in future with uh, uh, the pe people designers having uh, Good acquaintance with the both scripts. Mm. Yeah, thank you, uh, Sridhar sir. Uh, yeah, actually, I made some of. Uh, I have some examples that I create with the English and the Persian, and uh, now I'm working on the some Egyptian hieroglyphics converting to the letter form, mm. and some symmetrical forms. It's, it's just like I take just only circle, and I was creating some of yeah, so specific that letters. That you should. Uh... Talk to somebody who knows the Tamil script, and both yeah. of you should interact with each other and create a new form. Yeah. Yep. Might work out. It'll be very interesting to do. Yes. Okay. Thank you, sir. Yeah, I will. Yes. I will keep sharing you. Yeah. Okay, Faisal. Uh, uh, best of luck to you for your thought. Thank you so much. We we anticipate uh, looking forward to such experiments. So that Thank will also so make much. that will also make a global village in one way of scripts also. Okay, so then Kumar is no longer logged. In. Yeah, <laughs> yes, yeah, that will be no. Yeah. So we will wind up, and I'd like to thank everybody who has joined in. Thank you, thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you, bye. -bye. Thank you, sir.